right, Robert. It's Nick, symbolic. Um, yeah, there's humor everywhere, man. Everywhere. Uh, there's absurdity everywhere, I think. And uh, absurdity tends, I think, to be humorous, too. Of course, there's irony, which is painful humor, but, you know, there's all kinds of humor, huh? Um, comedy's a different matter. Comedy can be cruel. Humor isn't cruel. Comedy usually has a uh, victim, you know. Um, but humor is cool. And uh, so what are the elements of humor? Uh, there's usually some disproportion of some kind, some surprise, um, some unexpected outcome. And strangely enough, there's pain. The pain's kind of sometimes buried in the humor. Um, the only painless kind of humor I can really think of is, say, a, a simple pun, which is simply a grammatical wordplay. And guess what we do? We add the pain. When somebody tells us a pun, we go, ouch. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong about everything, you know? Um, it's good to be an unsung hero. The reason being that most people I know cannot sing on key. So if they were singing your praises, man, it, you know, you can't have everybody singing your praises. You got to just have the good ones with good voices. And if there's an afterlife, um, I wonder if the people who told a lot of lies will be singing off key. Or we'll have to listen to angels who sing off key. As I, or maybe that's a hell world. I'm not sure. Yeah, sounds like the latter, man. Um, the corruption of religion. What corrupts religion? Ah, whatever corrupts man would corrupt religion. Because religion is really uh, a vehicle invented by man, right? I guess. So, power, greed. Yeah, that's usually what it is. Power and greed uh, usually corrupt people. And then they manipulate things. And I like cor corruption. I like the word corruption. I don't like corruption. I like the word corruption because it, it reminds me of rust, something that slowly kind of eats away at things. Uh, so you can have, I guess, moral turpitude can corrupt a person. Um, but, you know, usually that's a kind of greed, a greed for pleasure. You know, greed, you can have greed for monetary gain, gain or a greed for pleasure, or uh, then again, you can have power, or you want to have power over people. Those things corrupt. I'll have to think about that more. It's a good question, man. Um, so, what now what corrupts scripture um, is sort of different. You know, scripture usually has started um, as an oral tradition. Um, so, the first thing that tends to corrupt scripture is just uh, people's faulty memory. You know, uh, people just don't, well, you know how it is, man. People, people are notoriously are bad witnesses anyway. You know, I, I mean, I, I forget the exact figure, but I, th I think people within 24 hours of having witnessed some event, they've forgotten like 75% of what happened. That's why people are like taking statements right away, you know, but as soon as possible, take people's statements because it's going to change. And whatever they've forgotten, the mind will fill in um, and sort of invent something so that it makes kind of sense. Our minds are always searching for sense you know so they'll it'll just fill it in and, and people will believe that's what they saw so um, the fallibility of the human memory um, is the first thing that will corrupt scripture um, of course there could be dishonesty uh, as well um, I heard an interesting point of view um, also that uh, if there's a pure word of God then um, has to refract through the human mind and in the process of refracting through the human mind it's going to suffer some sort of loss or misinterpretation or a, a data loss or loss of dimension of some sort you know so the fact that it's refracting through the human mind um, is going to um, in a sense well I don't want to use the word taint but I guess the word taint sounds nice and poetic it will taint that um, I gotta check the time hold on hey, hey, hey. I'm using this direct upload thing um, uh, uh, dinosaur bones, man. Uh, yeah, dinosaur bones are great. Um, carbon, uh, uh, carbon dating is really cool. I think the difficulty some people have is if they believe the literal word of the Bible, then they believe literally that the world is only 6,000 years old. Say, and it's hard to squeeze all those dinosaurs into the last six thousand years. You know, you end up with them uh, living with people simultaneously, and it becomes kind of absurd. Once again, absurdity. Um, uh, you know, during the Middle Ages, the uh, uh, scripture, uh, at least uh, Judeo-Christian scripture, Christian scripture was interpreted on at least three levels. There was the literal 
level, uh, but there was also the metaphorical level and the spiritual level and some other level that I don't recall unless I'm wrong. And of course, then I wouldn't recall it, or my mind might have filled it in or invented something. But uh, in in any event. If someone squeezes it down and just says, well, it's just literally true. That's the only way to understand it. And it says the earth was, you know, made in six days and six nights. And that was 6,000 years ago. Predicating all of your interpretation of science and everything else on that is going to cause some of uh, what I consider to be absurdities, you know. Uh, so maybe we can also corrupt scripture by viewing it in too narrow a focus, you know. Um, yeah, we could probably do that too. Um, religions, of course, you know, power, power is going to cause a distortion of all kinds. You know, people are going to start to use scripture as well as um, you know ritual and custom uh, towards their own end as an instrumentality to to achieve uh, to achieve something else. You sort of, you know, uh, you sort of see that. You know, Machiavelli uh, uh, has some line. I don't know whether I read this or my father told me this, but somewhere in Machiavelli, he says that any form of government, which could include a, a religious government, um, within 20 years it goes corrupt. Um, so the uh, Machiavelli's answer was apparently that every 20 years you cut everybody's heads off, just cut all the heads off and start new. You know, um, what else did you mention, man? What else did you mention, man? Uh, yeah, trust. You know. Uh, uh, trusting people uh, as far as you know books and you know people's I mean a lot of times you can trust what people that people sometimes you, you can trust that people believe what they say and that they're sincere in their belief but they could be wrong you know so it's it's more than trust it's you know whether you're willing to believe that uh, some kind of truth has escaped all the human fallibilities which are just that's rare that's gonna be hard um, why are we here? I don't know, man. I wish I'd do that one. Hey, maturity. Um, thinking about other people making you mature. Yeah, I, th I think you're right because I, I, I think you hit a really good point. The people who are really immature are completely narcissistic. They're not thinking about other people. Um, there's no compassion. It's just total solipsism, you know, total, you know, me, me, me kind of thing, you know. Um, so I think that that's a, 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 a necessary basis for maturity. I also think, though, just in my own personal life, um, when you reach a point where you really have to take a stand for something and you you know you're risking a lot when you do it but when you take a stand for something and you you do sig take a significant risk uh, but you do it because it's right it's almost like I guess taking an ethical stand really also matures you of course usually you're not likely to do that unless you're doing that for the sake of others usually um, so so it's it's necessary as a foundation to have um, that regard for others and thinking about others, yeah, it's cool. Um, I, I like to read uh, people I in the past and think about the perspective of where their minds were from. For instance, Aristotle, um, when it comes to uh, ge uh, geology and you know a lot of the physical sciences, as they say, you know, you know why earthquakes happen, etc. He was wrong about almost everything, almost almost everything. Um, so I don't read him to read anything that's right, but it's fascinating to contemplate, watch his mind work, and contemplate what kind of worldview is this, you know, um, and just watch his mind and think about it. It's kind of like being a perpetual anthropologist, man. That's what I do, especially if I run into people that are driving me crazy. I just imagine that I'm an anthropologist from another culture and I'm observing this person. That helps also uh, if they're messing with you, you know. Um, I got like one minute, man. Um, God, one minute. Um, um, a lot of scripture uh, serves multiple purposes, I think. Um, um, some some types of scripture are also part history, part poetry, um, a cultural transmission in a way, not just a religious transmission, but an entire cultural transmission. Some scripture is is declared to be pure revelation um, but uh, some some kinds are just like I think a, a repository of culture and uh, I'm running out of time man so I gotta go good talking to you Robert um, I won't sing your praises because man I, I don't think I can sing on key but I will I will speak your praises in poetry all right buddy we'll do the internal music ciao where, where's my button okay I got the off switch now <laughs>